look at the question A. Eh? Question A, example 1.9. The Cartesian coordinate of a point in the xy plane, they are negative 3.5 and negative 2.5 meters as shown in figure 1.8. Oh, so, uh, this, this is it. Okay. Okay. So, so this this is the point. Okay, this is the point, and we know that the coordinate, the coordinates they are negative three point five, and negative two point five, right? So how to change this pair of coordinates into polar coordinates? Okay, right. First, we use this formula r equals to square root of x square plus y square so negative 3.5 square actually is a positive then plus negative 2.5 square oh, this one when you square it, it becomes positive uh, can do you know how to key in inside your calculator in in one step can or not this type of calculation square yeah, root. I do, I do. Can. you can you know can. how to use the calculator yeah. to evaluate yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay so if you look at the original one there are three significant figures here so finally your radius mm -hmm. also you calculate to three significant figures so it's 4.3 meters okay right now how to find the theta and we know tangent theta is y o x so tangent theta y is negative 2.5 x is negative 2.3 so the number is 0 0.1714 uh, so how to find theta you just use your calculator you use the inverse tangent function and you get uh, your calculator will give you which number 35.5 or they will give you 216 I can change it to degree or radian. Ah uh, no, we use radian. Everything we use. Uh, sorry, everything oh, okay. we use degree, right? But what I I want to know is that you you, you know this this uh, four quadrants. This mm -hmm. is the first quadrant. The first quadrant is uh, all positive. Then the second quadrant is the sine positive. The rest is negative. Okay. This is the second quadrant. Then for the third quadrant, for the third quadrant, the tangent is positive. The tangent is positive. The other two, uh, sine and cosine, is negative. In the fourth quadrant, in the fourth quadrant, uh, cosine is mm -hmm. positive. The other two is negative. Have Have you learned this before? Yep. Yeah. So if you are not very sure, then uh, I will explain further, right? Mm. Okay. So now <clears throat> you use your calculator, you type this uh, shift. I don't know if there's a shift button. 35.5. Ah, so you will get this 35. number 35.5. But 35.5, yes. you will not get this number 216. Now, if you remember our no. our this, I, I clear this one first. Okay. Now you remember this uh, polar here. Eh? Now, this is divided into four quadrants. The x-axis, uh, sorry, the y-axis and the x-axis, they divide the plane into four quadrants. Okay. They divide the plane into four quadrants. And this is called the first quadrant. Uh, first quadrant number one, first quadrant Q U A D R A N T. Yes, this is the first quadrant. Okay, this from this this side here all is the first quadrant. Now in the first quadrant, whether it is sine, cosine, or tangent, it is always positive. Every all of them they are positive. Now in the second quadrant here, this is the second quadrant. Mm -hmm. 
the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, own the sine is positive. Sine is positive. The other two, cosine and tangent, okay. is negative. Now, in the third quadrant here, third quadrant, in the third quadrant, the tangent is positive. Tangent, T N G E T. Tangent is positive. Okay. And the fourth quadrant here. Okay. This is the fourth quadrant. Okay. In the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. Uh, tangent and sine will be negative. Okay. Now, um, where is the Okay, oh, now I have to switch back to this. Okay, here. Now, you, if you look at this point A here, the point that we are going to convert, okay, the point that we are going to convert is A here. Now, A lies in which quadrant? A lies in which quadrant? First, second, A, first, fourth. Ah, yeah. A, yeah. You, you, you see here, you see here, uh, this one, okay? This is the first quadrant, this is the second, this is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. Can you see these black lines? They divide the plane into four quadrants. Four mm -hmm. quadrants, okay? So this is the third quadrant. And if you look at our point, the point A here, the point A lies in the third quadrant, right? This is first, yep. uh, I use a color first. Huh? This is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third, and this is the fourth quadrant. Now, our point A, this is our point A. Our point A lies in the third quadrant. Hmm? So, given this number 35, huh? given this number 35, okay. yep. now this 35.5 that we have found out, this 35.5 is actually in the first quadrant. It's actually in the first quadrant here. Oh, I cannot move already. Okay. Now 35 is actually somewhere here, right? Okay, uh -huh. like I say 35 is, is in the first quadrant. Okay. Now Ours is over here, right? The angle is in the third quadrant. Now, how to get this third angle quadrant. in the third quadrant? So, what you need to do is, you have to add 180, right? You use this number 35, okay? This number here, 35. You add 180, then you will get the corresponding angle in the third quadrant. Okay. See. Now, if you are not very sure, then I will take uh, some time in our next lesson to show you how to get the angles in the different quadrant. Okay or not? Mm -hmm. ah, so next lesson, I will show because your textbook didn't, didn't explain the, how to get the angle in the different quadrant. Okay, right. So uh, for the time being, if you are not very sure of this, you just uh, put down. Oh, this one uh, in the fourth quad, in the third quadrant, you have to add one apo there, right? So the angle is actually two hundred and sixteen. So what is the coordinate of this point? Negative three point five, negative two point five, in polar coordinate <laughs> form. So in polar coordinate form, it is. 4.3 meter and 216 degrees 216 actually they round off like it's 215 point it's point 0.5 so they round off to 6 okay right uh other than this uh, how to find the angle in the quadrant uh do uh, is there any problem you don't know how to convert this no 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 oh, oh, i understand you know how to convert from a rectangular system to polar system like this using this two mm -hmm. green color mm -hmm. formula? Can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can then uh, 
I I can carry on with the next one. But the, the this this part, uh, this part I will explain further the next lesson. Okay. Okay. Now there's a different problem. The problem now is we have polar system. 5 meters 37 degrees. 5 meters and 37 degrees. How to convert them into rectangular system? Okay. To convert them to rectangular system, you have to use this one. X equals to R cos theta and Y equals to R sin theta. So you substitute these numbers. Okay. Substitute these numbers. 5 cos 37 and you get uh, 3.99 and this is the x coordinate when you substitute this inside the y coordinate r sin theta r is 5 sin theta is 37 then you use your calculator and you calculate it is 3.01 so this number this number in this pair of numbers in polar system is equivalent to this pair of numbers in the rectangular coordinate system. Okay, so you have to remember the these four formulas now. The green green color one, or this one, this one, this one, and this one. So this is how you convert from one system to another. Okay. Okay, eh? right. So we carry on. Yep with the uh, problems yeah these are the problems okay clear mm. first okay clear then shift this a bit shift this a bit okay right so now uh, oh, it's another practice it's another practice here uh, Again, they involve this quadrant thing. Uh, I'm going to explain to you this quadrant in the next lesson. Okay. Uh, okay. We look at uh, the practical example. Okay. There is a building, right? And how high is this building? Okay. A person measure the height of a building by walking a distance of 4.6 meter from its base and shining base a and flashlight. Shining a flashlight. Uh, towards the top okay the beam is elevated at an angle of 39 degrees okay then if the flash is held at the height of two meters that means held above the head nah? this this man is two meters two meters are very tall how tall is your father two meters ah? your father one ah maybe two meters Four. i think he's, he's taller than many of these europeans <laughs> <laughs> maybe two meters is maybe about your father's height i'm only one point one point less than 1.7 1.69 okay <laughs> two meters is very very tall okay now um how okay find the height of the building okay now you see from here the height of the building is this delta y plus two meters. If we can okay. manage to find this delta y here and we add the two meters, it will be the height of the building. So how to find this delta y? Oh, it comes from the triangle, the right angle triangle here. Can you see a right angle triangle here? Right? Yes. The blue line and the two black lines they form a right angle triangle. Okay. Now the angle here is 39 degrees, 39 degrees. And from our knowledge of uh, coordinates, we know that x divided, y divided by x is tension theta. Okay, y divided by x is tension theta. Okay, this one, y divided by x is tension theta. So y, we just leave it as y. Then the x you bring over the other side. So x, tension theta. Okay, y equals okay. to x tangent theta and how much is the x oh this is the x right this is the x 56. so the x is 46 how much is the theta uh, this is the theta here the theta here is degree. 39 degrees 
So using your calculator, you can find out the delta y. Okay, the y. So, but then this is not the height of the building. The height of the building, you have to include the, the height of this man here. So it's plus 2. The height of the building, you have to add the height of the man. Okay, next one. Calculate the length of the beam. Now this is the length of the beam. The R here is the length of the beam. Now you still remember the formula R square R equals to square root of x square root plus y square. Plus y right? square. Mm. So you use the the x you have found here. The x you have found here. Huh? This one. You have found here. You substitute inside the x here. Then y. Now oh, y you cannot hey, sorry, this is not the x. Huh? This is the height of the building. Hey, what am I drawing? Okay, right. How much is the x? The x is this. Okay. 46 meters. Hey. What? Why is... Oh, uh, yeah. The x is 46. Correct. I type the body. <laughs> I move at the back. Okay. Right. So, the value of x is 46. Right. So, we have the 46 here then the y okay the y is not the height of the building right? the y is this this value here okay so the x square plus y square then you square root and that will give you the uh, length of the line okay don't don't use the height you know because the height include include this person and the the r only start from the head there the R start from the head, so you don't include the two, right? Okay, so this is how you're going to use it. Now, another one, another uh, example. While standing at the top of a building 50 meter tall, you spotted a friend standing on a street corner using a protector and dangling thumb box you find that the angle between the horizontal and the direction to the spot on the sidewalk is 25 degrees. Okay. Now, um, this is the building, right? The building is 50 meters and you are standing on top of the building, 1.7, right? So your eye level is actually more than 50 meters. It's uh, 1.75 plus 50. So this is the vertical distance, okay. the total vertical distance. And the angle of depression, that means from the horizontal, you look downwards. So this is the angle of depression and it is given as 25 degrees. Okay. So how far is this person away from the foot of the building? How far is it? So again, we use this formula x y o x is tangent theta right y mm -hmm. y over x is tangent theta but your y now is 1.75 plus 50 1.75 plus 50 then divide by x divide by x right is tangent 25 the right angle is on this side okay so this mm -hmm. this is uh, 51.7 51.7 this is 50 51.7 so the whole length here is 51.7 the horizontal length here is x horizontal length here is x so that's why the opposite over adjacent is 25 this is the opposite 51.7 is the opposite and this is the the black line is the adjacent which is the same as x meter okay so you bring the x over, bring the tangent below and use your calculator. You can find one, one, one meter, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, any question? Any question? No, no, no question. Uh, no, then we end here. So this one, I will show you uh, 